And there are your competitors, Alex Ogloza and Adib Alam. Uh, two amazing players uh, that have battled through an intense circuit to get to where we are now. The longest national championships that we've had here in Indianapolis. A truly a marathon performance from both of these players. Yeah, really excellent tournament to try to get through. Yeah, the format was approved this year. We had 500 players, the biggest national tournament we've had. And they both did a great job to get through it. You know, there was a lot of rounds this year. There's nine rounds of best of one play, a six rounds of best of three play, and then the top cut, which was three rounds, with this being the third of more best of three play. So they had to get through a lot of opponents to get where they are now. Uh, really impressive to get where they're at. And I should, be, I should think it'll be a great match here. I think that yeah. it'll be uh, pretty impressive to be where they've gotten. Very exciting. But this isn't the only tournament these players have participated in. Let's take a look at some in-depth information on each of our competitors. On your screen is Alex Ogloza here. He is, of course, known for being 13th at 2010 Worlds, been around for a while, got second at the 2014 Oregon Regionals, and third at the 2012 San Jose Regionals. And, of course, he will be running Politoed, Kangaskhan, Ludicolo, Talonflame, Aegislash, and High Dragon. A very accomplished trainer. Up next is Adib Alam, who had a 10th place last year's Nationals, and some other very exciting uh, performances as well. Uh, he, of course, will be running a Gyarados, Aegislash, Amoongus, Tyranitar, Gudra, and Kangaskhan team. And it should be a very evenly matched battle between both of these competitors. Yeah, I'm a little excited to see the second place regional finish this year. Uh, one of the big stories of that regional was that outside of Gudra, uh, Gudra, I guess, had been pretty much irrelevant this entire circuit in North America, except for that one regional where it was in both of the finalist teams, uh, both him and the opponent who beat him, uh, which is a little ironic considering that now that rogue Pokemon is on the other side. Uh, I guess if anyone should know how to play against it, it should be him. But uh, the other trick there is that one of the reasons why you use Gudra is because it's very good against Rain, which he's now the one running. <laughs> so uh, it should be a strange matchup here, uh, kind of being on the other side that he's used to being from maybe a little bit. Yeah, the other big story of this is that after a tournament of some pretty exciting teams, we do have the Mirror Kangaskhan <laughs> matchup here. Uh, I think everyone probably expected to see that Pokemon in the finals, uh, and we are actually going to get it. <laughs> yeah, not too surprising. Uh, I, why both ways? They both know that their opponents have a variety of options. They're kind of figuring through, okay, if my opponent picks this, I need to pick yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that counters that. And we are going right into battle. The trainers have selected their leads, and we are about to get right into this. Of course, uh, Alex is on the top of your screen, and Adib is on the bottom. Adib choosing to lead with that Gyarados and the Kangaskhan up against the Kangaskhan High Dragon. And it finally happened, the double Kangaskhan turn one matchup. It was only a matter of time, but uh, the best Pokemon in the metagame here has got some important friends next to it. Uh, Gyarados is going to be an extremely, extremely large problem for Alex this entire series. Uh, I think I, being able to control Gyarados or not will likely determine whether, whether or not he can win this series. It's very good against most of his Pokemon. It doesn't take a lot of damage against most of the rain Pokemon. Intimidate disrupts almost everything else, so very important for... Uh, Alex will be able to deal with this. Hydreigon is going to be the key to pulling that off. It's going to be able to do decent amounts of damage to Gyarados, the big Draco Meteors, and Adib protecting it already. Yeah, Adib switching that Gyarados out in favor of Aegislash, another one of those counters to Kangaskhan that we've seen so much throughout this tournament. Of course, right away, Kangaskhan, mega evolving, getting the baby out of the pouch. Going to probably see the exact same thing on the other side. Yep, the opposing Kangaskhan now mega evolving as well. The animation's so nice, you saw it twice as Kangaskhans are on the field and ready to battle. And it looks like they actually would like to protect. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Kangaskhan could be offensive, but the protect will protect Adib from that fake out there. But the dark pulse from Hydreigon targeting the Aegislash. One hit KO! Aegislash goes down right from the start. Oh my gosh, what an absolutely massive play what to start play. the game. And we talked about important. Gyarados was to try to get rid of, but correctly anticipating it switching out. Uh, Deeb's best resistant to that dragon type attack was uh, Aegislash, and he just completely destroys it before it even gets the chance to move there. So huge knockout at no cost in the first turn. Uh, the only thing he gives up is having to lock into uh, Dark Pulse instead of Draco Meteor there and getting Kangaskhan intimidated again. A huge step there. We also saw that Adib's Kangaskhan Mega Evolved first, so it's possible that Alex would be running a slower Kangaskhan, perhaps relying on the speed of some of his faster Pokemon like Ludicolo in the Rain and Choice Scarf Palatode. 
Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. You mentioned at the start that, uh, that Adib lost to Rain earlier by overcompensating for the Rain, and we don't see Rain yet on the field for Alex. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Alex chooses to have that option in the back or if he's just going to brute force his way through like we saw yesterday. Yeah, Talent Flame was the method that he chose to dominate the game with last time, more so than the Rain. Uh, we did see some of the Palito, but not really any of the Lucolo. And it looks like Alex's Kangaskhan at minus two from those Intimidates is going to return, dealing a little bit of damage to the opposing Mega Kangaskhan, but not quite enough. Adib choosing to target that Hydreigon, rightly uh, identifying it as a huge threat, but still not enough to get the one shot on it. Dark Pulse comes out back onto Adib's Kangaskhan, a critical hit! And Alex takes a huge knockout, the Mega off the field, all ready for Adib, but Dragon Dance coming out from Gyarados, getting a nice boost to its offensive uh, presence. Yeah, Gyarados is not just going to stand around and let this happen, but another really important knockout. Kangaskhan going down without any, any damage going to the opposing Kangaskhan, and that is a really rough spot. Uh, that critical hit likely not mattering too much, as Hydreigon is holding those choice specs. Uh, some big damage there, and wow, uh, we mentioned Hydreigon is going to be important, but uh, it's already got two knockouts and we're only two turns into the game. Yeah, I don't think you could uh, ask for a better stat line if you're a Hydreigon right now. Tyranitar does come out onto the field, getting that sand up. Will protect uh, Tyranitar a little bit from some of the special attacks. Uh, Alex is going to go ahead and send out his own Aegislash, while Gyarados, with that boost, is going to waterfall the uh, Mega Kangaskhan. That boost deals a lot of damage, a critical hit, but still not enough. But Rock Tomb coming out from Adib's Tyranitar, going to deal negligible damage to that Aegislash, but does drop its speed. And the power-up punch comes out from Alex's Kangaskhan, trying to negate that and those Intimidate debuffs there, getting the plus two attack there on both hits of the power-up punch and dealing some good damage to that Tyranitar. Yeah, getting a lot of value out of that. The, the damage is important and getting that uh, attack back. At least now if it wants to sucker punch Gyarados, try to take some damage off, it'll be a little bit more... Yeah, but it'll actually hurt. Right. Um, another big play there is that uh, we do notice Gyarados not taking damage from the sand here. So safety goggles, that item you see too often in Gyarados here. Uh, I guess in this battle, it's really only going to prevent the uh, sand damage. I guess something like a Moongus, it could prevent Rage Powder. But I guess this team is not going to make too big of a difference. Yeah, but definitely an interesting item choice. And the Gyarados is putting a lot of offensive pressure on with that Dragon Dance boost. Uh, not something that we've seen too often but we do see it occasionally. Sucker Punch does come off from Alex's Mega King. It's gone onto Tyranitar, just trying to get a little bit of extra damage onto that Pokemon. Not too worried about the Gyarados, it seems, which is, which is going to use that Waterfall onto Aegislash, dealing just under half HP there. And Adib's Tyranitar is going to get the Rock Tomb off again onto Kangaskhan, get the KO. Both Megas now out, but Aegislash is going to change its stance and go right on the offensive using that Flash Cannon going to target that Tyranitar most likely. Yes, and gets the KO. And now Alex is in a very commanding position here. He definitely is. A little strange to see him ignoring the Dragon Dance Gyarados, but I think it's actually a good play. Uh, perhaps he's correctly discerned that Gyarados only has single target attacks, so by getting it as the only Pokemon remaining on the field, uh, it doesn't really matter how high its attack is, right? It still has to keep taking attacks as it knocks something out, even if it's able to take out its opponents in a single hit. So uh, time is definitely on his side. Uh, because of that Dragon Dance, it's going to be faster than Hydreigon, so Hydreigon's not going to be able to just blow it up the way maybe it could have normally, but... You know, it, between Aegislash and Hydreigon, it's going to take a big chunk of damage here, and there's still another fully healthy Pokemon in the back to help finish it off here. So, uh, excellent spot for Alex. He's managed this game really well and has the big advantage now. Gyarados is going to try to do whatever it can to bring this back for Adib. That Waterfall does connect with Hydreigon, does get the knockout there, but is going to leave it open to an attack from that Aegislash. Of course, we saw how much damage the Hydreigon did, but Aegislash is no slouch on its own. The Shadow Ball dealing uh, a little bit over half HP there and the Leftovers, making sure that Aegislash stays healthy. Yeah, that, uh, sh uh, the special defense drop from Sh Shadow Ball could be a big deal too. Uh, it's close enough where it's possible it wouldn't have knocked out uh, if the second one was used here, but I guess it doesn't really matter with Talonflame here. Uh, Talonflame's priority Brave Bird should quickly end this game, so uh, we will likely see Alex taking the first. Uh, excellently played game by him. And he's going to have to, uh, I'll, I'll let this happen first. <laughs> Alex definitely taking advantage of the win button that just appeared on his screen. <laughs> going to Brave Bird that Gyarados, gets the KO, takes game one in a very, in a very, very demanding performance. Great job by Alex there. Goes up 1-0, and Adib is going to have to try really hard to get back from that hole.
Yeah, that's a little disheartening. Uh, Gyarados did get that Dragon Dance up, but still really couldn't get anything done. I mentioned earlier on that Gyarados is probably his key here, and getting that going didn't seem to be enough there. Now, I'm sure he's expecting that, you know, even picking the same Pokemon, he could probably play the game a little bit better should he play mm -hmm. a similar roster again. Uh, giving up Aegis Slash for nothing on the first turn, turn there was one. a lot to come back from. Yeah. Especially because there wasn't even an attack going the other way. He just decided to play 4-3 the whole game because of the, that excellent decision that Alex made. So I would expect he's going to be a little more careful this time. But that's sort of the fun of playing with Pokemon using choice items like the Hydreigon there. If you guess right, you can get huge, huge rewards. But if you guess wrong, you can kind of give them up just as easily. So uh, perhaps in the next game, it'll go the other way. And Adib will be able to claw back into it. Uh, I think also... And he's probably going to want to protect the Kangaskhan a little bit better since it went down the next turn without doing a whole lot. And even though he got the two Intimidates on Alex's Kangaskhan, it got a little bit more done since you know, it was actually on the field for a few rounds there. So uh, Adib's just going to have to be careful in the beginning of the game here. Taking a big deficit early on is going to be really tough to recover from against this team because Alex is using a team with tons and tons of offensive power. He's got Choice Specs. He's got Choice Band. He's got Rain. He can really, really quickly finish Pokemon off. So you can't fall behind against that unless you've taken a whole lot. Uh, to set up your own KOs, or you're just going to keep getting buried. Yeah, and you're looking at Alex's team right now, that Kangaskhan, Taliflame, Talonflame, Politoed, Hydreigon, Aegislash, and the Ludicolo, up against Adib's, Gyarados, Aegislash, Amoongus, Tyranitar, Gudra, and here as both of these players decide to send out their leads, Alex leading with that Kangaskhan, Hydreigon again, immediate offensive pressure up against Kangaskhan and Amoongus from Adib, a little bit more defensive there, but able to maybe play around the, that Hydreigon a little bit better. It's kind of one of the classic combinations of this VGC film format with Kangaskhan and Amoongus here. Uh, Amoongus protects Kangaskhan while it tries to get those power-up punches and sweep on its own. So a little deviation in strategy this time, maybe instead of trying to do more of a Gyarados-focused attack like Adib did the first game, he's moving over to Kangaskhan in this game. Also interesting to see that in the first game, we didn't see any rain from Alex's side, just like the last time <laughs> Adib was against the rain team. Uh, but, it, we, but this time, he didn't really overcompensate for that rain, right? We didn't see the Gudra, but he still lost, right? The, the non-rain portion of his team, team still got him. So I, I'm kind of curious now if Alex won't consider using that rain mode, at least in the back, because it's likely that Adib's going to go farther and farther away from trying to counter rain. And it looks like Alex is worried about that Hydreigon. Uh, being vulnerable there. Switches in the Talonflame, always a risky choice. You never want to let Talonflame take any extra damage, uh, considering how much damage it deals to itself. Uh, Kangaskhan is going to go ahead and Mega Evolve uh, on its own, as well as Alex's Mega Kangaskhan going back out onto the field again. Uh, very similar turn one, one that I would expect to see potentially in a game three as well. Both Mega Kangaskhan's on the field now. While Alex is going to get the fake off, off this time onto the Amoongus, dealing a critical hit to the Amoongus. Fortunately, that critical hit was only on the fake out, so it could not deal uh, such a substantial. But the return from Adib onto Talonflame, and that's exactly why that was a risky switch in. Return the one hit KO from Adib's Kangaskhan. This looks like a repeat of last game, but uh, she was on the other foot this time. <laughs> it absolutely is. And I guess that's the danger of these powerful Pokemon, right? All of them capable of taking knockouts very, very quickly. So if you have a bad lead and try to switch out of it, if you don't have a very safe switch, and most often either of you guys are going to with the teams they're using, uh, you can lose a Pokemon very quickly. Uh, Deep's team is definitely a lot bulkier than Alex's, so you would have expected him to switch a little bit better out of the bad slots, though. Uh, Alex is just perfect in that first game. But uh, when the shoe is on the other foot like it is here, it's a lot tougher for Alex to recover. Uh, the trade-off of having all of that offensive power I was talking about between games is that they don't take hits very well, right? You know, that's the balance. If you have that power, you don't have the defense to go with it, and it's going to be tough for him to claw his way out of this one. Uh, Moongus didn't really take a lot of damage there. The Reducey is not using a Rocky Helmet, which is pretty popular to try to troll those Kangaskhans a little bit. So a uh, lucky break in that regard for Alex. He's, he's a little more health than he might otherwise, but he's really going to have a hard time burning through this Moongus in time to get uh, Kangaskhan going, though it may be in Draco Meteor range now. Yeah, and Amoongus is going to go ahead and Rage Powder to try to redirect any attacks coming from Alex. Uh, Deeb's Kangaskhan is going to get the power-up punch onto Alex's. A little bit of damage there and the plus two boost. A little bit under 50% there on uh, Alex's Hydreigon. Uh, and we are going to see if this Amoongus can survive this onslaught. Alex's Kangaskhan's return, dealing some good damage there. The Citrus Berry coming out from Amoongus, going to recover even more of its health. And of course, see if it can hit tank this attack from this Hydreigon. Will Draco Meteor will connect, and that should be enough to get the KO onto that Amoongus. Uh, potentially, yes, does get the KO. The special attack drop on Alex's Hydreigon, making it a little bit less scary. 
And that knockout came at a huge cost, though. Uh, it took both the Pokemon's turns, so Kangaskhan was able to get that power up punch for free. And also, Hydreigon had to lock into that Draco Meteor. Uh, the downfall of that, of course, is that every time I use it, it's going to lower its special attack, and it's already got two of those levels down now, so it's going to be a lot harder for him to turn the corner, try to do some damage to a Deeb's Kangaskhan here. We also have G Gyarados coming back in, intimidating that Kangaskhan, so both the Pokemon and Alex inside of the field have reduced attack now. Uh, neither of them can really fire off as quickly the attacks as they were previously, and that's going to make it hard to stop that Kangaskhan and the Gyarados, both of which have the stat boosting moves. Especially with uh, the heavy offensive focus on Alex's team. But Kangaskhan is going to switch out, but trying to get the return on that Kangaskhan there, but Adib correcting, correctly predicting that gets the KO onto Hydreigon instead, and Gyarados gets a free Dragon Dance. Something you never want to see if you're on the opposite side of that Gyarados. And this is definitely one of the most terrifying things you can face down in VGC. The Kangaskhan has two levels of attack, the Gyarados has a Dragon Dance up, and both of them are still at full health. And there's another Pokemon in the back. Uh, it looks like just as easily as Alex took that first game, he may lose the second one. Uh, both games, you know, they are that quick, quick knockout. It's just tough to recover from that with all the power in this format. Uh, both players play very aggressively here, and Alex is going to have a really tough time trying to find a way out of this one. Uh, maybe he can stall with Aegislash. Looks like Adib's the one who wants to do a little bit of stalling. Gyarados protecting itself as well as the Kangaskhan. Not going to let Alex's Kangaskhan get a free fake out off. Was going to go ahead and try for the return anyway, but Aegislash does get a free substitute up uh, because of that double protect on Adib's side. Adib taking a little bit of a break from the action and letting Alex get a little bit extra. Yeah, I don't blame him. Plays that very conservatively, but there's not really a reason not to. Uh, by doing it the way he did it, he can double target Kangaskhan that next turn if he'd like to. Just get that out of the way. Uh, because of the fake out, unlikely to be carrying protect. Uh, Aegislash does get that substitute, but it's a sort of the same situation as last game, right? You've got one Pokemon left on one side mm -hmm. trying to 3v1, it doesn't really matter. Gyarados is going to try and get that 3v1 situation in as soon as possible. About 50% onto the enemy Kangaskhan there as Return comes out from Alex's Kangaskhan, dealing some good damage back. Hit two times, once with the mama, once with the baby. And the Return coming out from Adib's Kangaskhan will get the KO on. Alex is Mega Kangaskhan, Mega off the field, Aegislash all alone, but still behind that substitute, which could potentially be dangerous. Uh, if you have only one Pokemon out of the field, you would, you would want to have it out with the uh, substitute up. Is going to go ahead and attack right away. The Flash Cannon onto Kangaskhan does pick up the KO there, and Kangaskhan faints. A uh, really important knockout there. Uh, I guess what was important really was the speed tie there. Uh, both these Kangaskhan are jolly, so every turn there is a 50-50 chance that one of them will move first. Uh, if the Kangaskhan on a deep side had moved first there, Alex's would never have been able to attack, which would have led to that 3v1 situation we were talking about. Instead, now it's only 2v1. Uh, still very unfavorable, but possibly more manageable for the Aegislash there. So uh, because of that 50-50, Alex is still at least in this game. Yeah, and especially with the Tyranitar out on the field, Aegislash can pressure it pretty hard pretty hard as the Waterfall does come back out from Gyarados, going to break that substitute and leave Aegislash open for the Tyranitar if it's able to get an attack in. Dark Pulse does come out from Adib's Tyranitar, is going to connect with Blade Form Aegislash. Aegislash goes down, Adib forces game three. Yeah, excellent play by him there. Uh, perhaps Aegislash attacking, not wanting to give a free Dragon Dance there, but the crowd going crazy here. A very exciting match and we have a third game to decide the national champion. You always want to have a game three for for Masters Nationals. It's definitely going to be exciting. Both of these players playing incredibly aggressive, which always makes for an exciting game full of fireworks. And yeah, that aggression is going to make this first turn into the team preview particularly nerve-wracking. It seemed like both the previous games we saw, that the game was almost over before it got started, because as soon as that first big knockout came out, they gave it up so easily they just couldn't recover. So they're going to both have to be a little more careful this time. They're really going to have to think hard about what they think their opponent's going to lead with, because if they guess wrong and end up in a situation where they have to switch in that first turn, uh, they're going to have to be a little bit more resourceful than they were in the first two games, because uh, they need a faster recovery. A really tough situation to play out of. Definitely, and we are looking at Alex's against Adib's Kangaskhan and Gyarados. I think I've seen this before. <laughs> it's the same leads as game one, so Alex is probably feeling pretty good now. And uh, speaking of that, I have to admit, I really like seeing him smiling with the camera on him there. You know, he's like, you know, game three of the national championship. He looks like he's having a good time, right? I respect that. <laughs> and uh, I think that it nerved me a little bit if I was Adib. Like, he looked a little bit more nervous there, and I would be too. Uh, you know, it's tough in these situations to kind of keep a cool head. But with how important these turns are, it's really important these players focus. You know, make sure that they have got their head in the game, they're not thinking about the intensity of the match, how important this is. But yeah, they're playing to be the national champion this one game, so very easily get unnerved here. Yeah, very easy to be unnerved, even though there are no Aerodactyls on the field. 
We do, of course, see both of those Kangaskhan going to go ahead and mega evolve right away, get the baby out of the pouch, increase the offensive pressure, which is what this matchup has been all about from the start. And again, the second mega Kangaskhan, mega evolution. It's possibly the greatest animation that this tournament will ever see. As both Kangaskhans, all four of them are out on the field. The Protect coming back out from Adib. No switch this time, going to tra change that out. But the fake out does connect with Adib's Gyarados from Alex's uh, Mega Kangaskhan. And Hydreigon is going to go for the Draco Meter, but into the Protect of Adib's Kangaskhan. No damage dealt. Yeah, no damage dealt, but still not a bad turn for him there. Uh, he gets the fake out on Gyarados, preventing anything like a Dragon Dance this time. So, kind of a wash there. Now, the first time we don't see the game decided, basically on the first turn, which is great, right? We want to just want to try <laughs> out as long as possible. Uh, Hydreigon being locked into Draco Meteor is both good and bad. Uh, it's not like Adib can take advantage of this, but just quickly knocking it out with the combination of these Pokemon there because it's quicker than the Gyarados is. And neither of these Pokemon want to take the Draco Meteor. Uh, Kangaskhan will likely survive it, but really doesn't want to take all that damage. And Gyarados is probably in range to be knocked out by it. So, it's not unlikely that we'll see Aegislash try to switch into one of those slots, but he's going to guess correctly. It looks like there will be no switches. Alex does go for the power-up punch onto the opposing Gyarados there. Gets the boosts. Going to try and negate that Intimidate drop from earlier. Not very effective damage, but does get the boosts off. Adib's Kangaskhan going right for the return onto Alex's Hydreigon. Is going to deal quite a bit of damage. Will survive, though, to fire off this Draco Meteor. It will connect. Who is it targeting? It's targeting the Kangaskhan. The Draco Meteor is going to fall. Will it be enough? Is he going to get the one-shot? He gets the one-hit KO! The Draco Meteor gets the one-hit KO onto the Mega Kangaskhan, and it goes down, but Gyarados is going to be able to fight back and get the Ice Fang off onto Hydreigon. Two incredibly offensive threats down. So this is great, though. The players are trading blow for blow this time. We get down to 3-3, three to three, both of them getting advantage there by removing an important Pokemon on the other side. Uh, an important thing with Hydreigon going down there is that it can no longer just quickly remove that Aegis Slash. You know, the previous game, that Dark Pulse, just quickly getting rid of it makes it much easier for uh, Adib to deal with that Kangaskhan, but that's not going to happen this time, or for Alex, rather, to deal with it. So not going to happen this time. Uh, the one thing Kangaskhan does have going for it is it got that level of attack back from Power Up Punch, so it's back to plus one. It's got a little threat going. Uh, interesting to see that Gyarados chose to knock out the Hydreigon to remove that threat as opposed to trying to get that Dragon Dance off. So uh, the value is changing a little bit here. Ooh, an incredible switch in for Alex here as Talonflame gets in for free up against Adib's Amoongus. Uh, Amoongus very much afraid of having to deal with that Talonflame. Yeah, definitely Adib's worst nightmare here to see Talonflame staring it down here. Uh, quick Brave Bird will remove that Amoongus if he tries to do it. But it'll be interesting to see if he does. Gyarados is going to protect, hoping to get Talonflame focusing it instead. Brave Bird does go off, though, is going to connect with the Amoongus and deal a lot of damage to both the Amoongus and the Talonflame. Is it up? It gets the one-hit KO with the critical hit! Talonflame gets the one-hit KO onto Amoongus. Free KO for Alex there. Deals itself about 40% damage there while uh, Kangaskhan tries to attack the Gyarados, but in the protect. And Gudra's on the field, trying to bring it back for Adib. A little surprising to see the Gudra finally make an appearance. Uh, perhaps, perhaps Adib was also thinking that maybe that rain mode would be selected. He'd try to counter it, but instead of Aegislash this game, we have Gudra. Uh, were it Aegislash, he could have tried to switch that in, either one of the Draco Meteors previously, or right now it would have created a more difficult situation for Alex for trying to Flare Blitz it instead of Brave Bird. Alex again going for that win button, uses the Brave Bird onto the Gudra. We've seen how specially defensive it is, but it takes so much damage from that physical Brave Bird. Down to 29 HP, return off from Kangaskhan onto the Gyarados, gets another critical hit. Gyarados goes down in one, doesn't even need the baby. And Gudra is going to finally get the Talonflame off the field, but it's, uh, it's not looking great for Adib right now. Yeah, I can't imagine the lone Gudra coming back here. A Talonflame got a lot of damage down there. And I think this game looks like it's really going to be decided by that mind game and turn zero with the team preview there. Uh, Gudra coming out here instead of Aegis Slash, perhaps because of the threat of that rain mode. And even though it never made an appearance in this series, uh, the rain mode may have taken this for Alex here. Uh, just the threat of it made a deep change what he wanted to do, and now Kangaskhan is going crazy instead of those rain Pokemon. Yeah, and a crazy Kangaskhan is never what you want to see in game three of the finals here. Alex's Kangaskhan is going to get the return. Very fitting, Kangaskhan gets the final knockout here as Alex Ogloza is now your Masters Video Game National Championship. Give it up for Alex, everybody.
Oh, wow. I got to say, I loved watching that match. It was just so aggressive all the time. That's exactly what I want to see out of a Pokemon match. Yeah, it was so close. Too. Both games could easily have gone either way. Just King A little bit of damage to the opposing Mega Kangaskhan, but not quite enough. Adib choosing to target that Hydreigon, rightly uh, uh, identifying it as a huge threat, but still not enough to get the one shot on it. Dark Pulse comes out back onto Adib's Kangaskhan. A critical hit! And Alex takes a huge knockout. The Mega off the field already for Adib, but Dragon Dance coming out from Gyarados getting a nice boost to its offensive uh, presence. Yeah, Gyarados is not just going to stand around and let this happen, but another really important knockout. Kangaskhan going down without any damage going to the opposing Kangaskhan, and that is a really rough spot. Uh, that critical hit likely not mattering too much, as Hydreigon is holding those choice specs. Uh, some big damage there, and wow. Uh, we mentioned Hydreigon is going to be important, but uh, it's already got two knockouts, and we're only two turns into the game. Yeah, I don't think you could uh, ask for a better stat line if you're a Hydreigon right now. Tyranitar does come out onto the field, getting that sand up. Will protect uh, Tyranitar a little bit from some of the special attacks. Uh, Alex is going to go ahead and send out his own Aegis Slash, while Gyarados, with that boost, is going to waterfall the uh, Mega Kangaskhan. That boost deals a lot of damage, a critical hit, but still not enough. But Rock Tomb coming out from Adib's Tyranitar, going to deal negligible damage to that Aegis Slash, but does drop its speed. And the power-up punch comes out from Alex's Kangaskhan, trying to negate that and those intimidate debuffs there, getting the plus two attack there on both hits of the power-up punch and dealing some good damage to that Tyranitar. Yeah, getting a lot of value out of that. The, d the damage is important and getting that uh, attack back. At least now if it wants to sucker punch Gyarados, try to take some damage off, it'll be a little bit more... Yeah, it'll actually hurt. Right. Um, another big play there is that uh, we do notice Gyarados not taking damage from the sand here. So safety goggles, that item you see too often in Gyarados here. Uh, I guess in this battle, it's really only going to prevent the uh, sand damage. I guess something like a Moongus, it could prevent Rage Powder. But I guess this team is not going to make too big of a difference. Yeah, but definitely an interesting item choice. And the Gyarados is putting a lot of offensive pressure on with that Dragon Dance boost. Uh, not something that we've seen too often but we do see it occasionally. Sucker Punch does come off from Alex's Mega King. It's gone onto Tyranitar, just trying to get a little bit of extra damage onto that Pokemon. Not too worried about the Gyarados, it seems, which is going to use that Waterfall onto Aegislash, dealing just under half HP there. And Adib's Tyranitar is going to get the Rock Tomb off again onto Kangaskhan, get the KO. Both Megas now out, but Aegislash is going to change its stance and go right on the offensive using that Flash Cannon going to target that Tyranitar most likely. Yes, and gets the KO. And now Alex is in a very commanding position here. He definitely is. A little strange to see him ignoring the Dragon Dance Gyarados, but I think it's actually a good play. Uh, perhaps he's correctly discerned that Gyarados only has single target attacks, so by getting it as the only Pokemon remaining on the field, uh, it doesn't really matter how high its attack is, right? It still has to keep taking attacks as it knocks something out, even if it's able to take out its opponents in a single hit. So uh, time is definitely on his side. Uh, because of that Dragon Dance, it's going to be faster than Hydreigon, so Hydreigon's not going to be able to just blow it up the way maybe it could have normally, but you know, it, between Aegis Slash and Hydreigon, it's going to take a big chunk of damage here, and there's still another fully healthy Pokemon in the back to help finish it off here. So, uh, excellent spot for Alex. He's managed this game really well and has the big advantage now. Gyarados is going to try to do whatever it can to bring this back for Adib. That Waterfall does connect with Hydreigon, does get the knockout counters to Kangaskhan that we've seen so much throughout this tournament. Of course, right away, Kangaskhan, Mega evolving, getting the baby out of the pouch. Going to probably see the exact same thing on the other side. Yep. The opposing Kangaskhan now mega evolving as well. The animation's so nice, you saw it twice as Kangaskhans are on the field and ready to battle. And it looks like they actually would like to protect. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Kangaskhan could be offensive, but the protect will protect Adib from that fake out there. But the dark pulse from Hydreigon targeting the Aegis Slash. One hit KO! Aegis Slash goes down right from the start. Oh my gosh, what an absolutely massive play what to start play. the game. And we talked about how important Gyarados was to try to get rid of, but correctly anticipating it switching out. Uh, Deeb's best resistance to that dragon type attack was uh, Aegislash, and he just completely destroys it before it even gets the chance to move there. So huge knockout at no cost in the first turn. Uh, the only thing he gives up is having to lock into uh, Dark Pulse instead of Draco Meteor there and getting Kangaskhan intimidated again. A huge step there. We also saw that Adib's Kangaskhan Mega Evolved first, so it's possible that Alex would be running a slower Kangaskhan, perhaps relying on the speed of some of his faster Pokemon like Ludicolo in the Rain and Choice Scarf Palatode. 
Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. You mentioned at the start that, uh, that Adib lost to Rain earlier by overcompensating for the Rain, and we don't see Rain yet on the field for Alex. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Alex chooses to have that option in the back or if he's just going to brute force his way through like we saw yesterday. The yeah, Talon Flame was the method that he chose to dominate the game with last time, more so than the Rain. And we did see some of the Palito, but not really any of the Ludicolo. And it looks like Alex's Kangaskhan at minus two from those Intimidates is going to return dealing. And there are your competitors, Alex Ogloza and Adib Alam. Uh, two amazing players uh, that have battled through an intense circuit to get to where we are now. The longest national championships that we've had here in Indianapolis. A truly a marathon performance from both of these players. Yeah, really excellent tournament to try to get through. Yeah, the format was improved this year. We had at 500 players, the biggest national tournament we've had. And they both did a great job to get through it. Now, there was a lot of rounds this year. There's nine rounds of best of one play, a six rounds of best of three play, and then the top cut, which was three rounds, with this being the third of more best of three play. So they had to get through a lot of opponents to get where they are now. Uh, really impressive to get where they're at. And I should, be, I should think it'll be a great match here. I think that yeah. it'll be uh, pretty impressive to be where they've gotten. Very exciting. But this isn't the only tournament these players have participated in. Let's take a look at some in-depth information on each of our competitors. On your screen is Alex Ogloza here. He is, of course, known for being 13th at 2010 Worlds, been around for a while, got second at the 2014 Oregon Regionals and third at the 2012 San Jose Regionals. And, of course, he will be running Politoed, Kangaskhan, Ludicolo, Talonflame, Aegislash, and High Dragon, a very accomplished trainer. Up next is Adib Alam, who had a 10th place last year's Nationals and some other very exciting uh, performances as well. Uh, he, of course, will be running a Gyarados, Aegislash, Amoongus, Tyranitar, Gudra, and Kangaskhan team. And it should be a very evenly matched battle between both of these competitors. Yeah, I'm a little excited to see the second place regional finish this year. Uh, one of the big stories of that regional was that outside of Gudra, uh, Gudra, I guess, had been pretty much irrelevant this entire circuit in North America, except for that one regional where it was in both of the finalist teams, uh, both him and the opponent who beat him, uh, which is a little ironic considering that now that rogue Pokemon's on the other side. Uh, I guess if anyone should know how to play against it, it should be him. But uh, the other trick there is that one of the reasons why you use Gudra is because it's very good against Rain, which he's now the one running. <laughs> so uh, it should be a strange matchup here, uh, kind of being on the other side that he's used to being from maybe a little bit. Yeah, the other big story of this is that after a tournament of some pretty exciting teams, we do have the Mirror Kangaskhan matchup here. Uh, I think everyone probably expected to see that Pokemon in the finals, uh, and we are actually going to get it. <laughs> yeah, not too surprising. Uh, I, why both ways? They both know that their opponents have a variety of options. They're kind of figuring through, okay, if my opponent picks this, I need to pick you know, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that counters that. And we are going right into battle. The trainers have selected their leads, and we are about to get right into this. Of course, uh, Alex is on the top of your screen, and Adib is on the bottom. Adib choosing to lead with that Gyarados and the Kangaskhan up against the Kangaskhan High Dragon. And it finally happened, the double Kangaskhan turn one matchup. It was only a matter of time. But, uh, the best Pokemon in the metagame here has got some important friends next to it. Uh, Gyarados is going to be an extremely, extremely large problem for Alex this entire series. Uh, I think uh, being able to control Gyarados or not will likely determine whether, whether or not he can win this series. It's very good against most of his Pokemon. It doesn't take a lot of damage against most of the rain Pokemon. Intimidate disrupts almost everything else. So very important for uh, Alex will be able to deal with this. Hydreigon is going to be the key to pulling that off. It's going to be able to do decent amounts of damage to Gyarados, the big Draco Meteors, and Adib's protecting it already. Yeah, Adib switching that Gyarados out in favor of Aegislash, another one of those...